we finally got the text messages between Terrence Bradley and Ashley Merchant, and there's a whole lot to go through. Let's get to it. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the text messages between Nathan Wade's former law partner, Terrence Bradley, and Ashley Merchant, who is a lawyer for Michael Roman, one of Trump's many co-defendants in the Fulton County, Georgia election interference case. Now, there is a lot to get through, but first things first, before we get to the text messages, each one of them released between Terrence Bradley and Ashley Merchant, let's give you a brief recap. Now, you see the gentleman on the stage looking kind of perturbed, kind of perplexed, kind of pensive. That is Terrence Bradley. He is the former law partner of Nathan Wade. And as you know, Nathan Wade is the now admitted lover of Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis. Now, the conflict here is whether or not Nathan Wade and Fonnie Willis began their romantic relationship before or after he was hired by Fonnie Willis to be a special prosecutor in the election interference case involving President Donald Trump, Michael Roman, and many others. Now, speaking about Michael Roman, the woman in front here is Ashley Merchant, Michael Roman's lawyer. Now, Ashley Merchant and Terrence Bradley allegedly, according to the text messages, were communicating and Terrence Bradley was giving her dirt on Nathan Wade. Why would he do that, you ask? Well, Terrence Bradley was in the law of former Nathan Wade, but he was kicked out after some impropriety allegations, some allegations against women. Nothing proven as far as I know, but allegations. He was kicked out. So maybe there was an axe to grind. Maybe he was trying to get revenge. I don't really know. But when Ashley Merchant questioned him in court about the text that he sent her, all of a sudden it was, I don't know, and I was speculating, and I can't recall, and a bunch of pausing and squinting. Basically, you were snitching on your former law partner in the text messages, but then when you get to court, you're singing a whole different tune. You did a whole 180. Now, I don't know what happened. Did he get a big bag of money? Was he paid off? Was he threatened? Did he have a change of heart? I have no idea. But before I go any further into my questions, let's get straight to the text messages. Now, it might be a little bit hard to see. I will link to everything I'm talking about right now in the box so you can see it a little bit more clearly. If you're on IG, visit the link in the bio. Go to the corresponding article on the website. But here is the first. Now, Ashley Merchant, the lawyer, her text will be in green. Terrence Bradley's are in the, the grayish background, okay? So the FCDA Open Records is saying they don't have an original contract for when Nathan began work. They only have his renewal contract. Is that possible? And then she sent him an attachment of a picture, and it says, Record Center Open Records Request. And he responds, wow. And then she says later, well, right after that, they're stalling big time. He says, yes, they are. Let's continue. Now, the Chris in this particular message here is Chris Campbell, a law partner of Nathan Wade. And a little bit of that uh, context for the first one, it says they show a congenial collaborative effort between the two as Merchant attempted to investigate facts about the affair between Nathan Wade and Fonnie Willis. You catch me? So let's keep on going here. So she asked him, any idea who I could get an affidavit from on the affair? And he says, no, no one would freely burn that bridge. She says, okay, if Chris was asked under oath, would he know? Terrence says, no. Ashley, wow, I figured he would. I didn't expect them to be so careful. It's like a little emoji right here. I can't really tell what it is. And then he responds, he knows, but he won't admit it. So Chris Campbell, another former law partner or current or whatever of Nathan Wade, the same as Terrence Bradley, Terrence Bradley is saying he knows about the affair, but he won't admit to it in court. Okay. So he's admitting that there was an affair. And the whole thing is when did the affair happen before or after November 1st, 2021? Terrence Bradley is saying it happened before that they met in 2018 or 2019. Let's continue. Um, they're talking about the Florida trips between Finding Willis and Nathan Wade. So then Ashley's asking, last trip was this summer, May or June? Terrence says, 
No, I didn't know he was gone by then. I was gone by then. That surprised me. They took many trips to Florida and Texas. And Napa actually says, he says, California. Ashley says, yep, because Napa, you know, California. Terrence responds when she moved her daughter there. Talking about Fonnie Willis moving her daughter to California. Ashley responds, I can't believe they were so carefree. I'm trying to anticipate her response when I blow this up. So, again, these are two lawyers talking about the case. Two lawyers. Remember, Terrence Bradley was Nathan Wade's former law partner, and he doubled as Nathan Wade's divorce attorney. Ashley Merchant, this is Michael Roman's lawyer, one of Trump's co-defendants. These are two lawyers collaborating on the case to get dirt on Nathan Wade. That's what's happening here in these text messages. Let's continue. Terrence responds, her daughter flunked out of FAMU, Florida A&M University, if you don't know, shout out to the Rattlers, and moved to California. And HBCU, that's the HBCU, by the way, in Tallahassee, Florida. Anyway, um, they continue. Ashley asks, they had a full-blown relationship. Insane, just insane. Terrence responds, he went to help move her. She says, why would... Why she would hire him is insane. Terrence says, yes. Ashley says, like, just date. Don't hire him. Because remember, Fonnie Willis hired Nathan Wade in November of 21 to be a special prosecutor on the Trump election interference case in Fulton County, Georgia. And from January 22 to date, I guess right now, the Fulton County DA's office has paid Nathan Wade's firm $650,000. The next highest firm got paid $90,000, and then the one below that got paid $75,000. So you go from $75,000 to $90,000 to $650,000, and that person you gave this big amount of money to, this big gap, went to a guy that you were fornicating with who was married. And when you went to court, and were asked about it, you said, oh, no, 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 that didn't start until 2022. Meanwhile, you have witnesses, friends, former law partners that say something else. Let's keep on rocking. And Ashley asked, do you think it started before she hired him, meaning the affair? Terrence says, absolutely. It started when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton. She responds, or was she liked? His comment there, it started when she left the DA's office. And then he adds more context. They met at the municipal court CLE conference. She responds, that's what I figured when he was married. And then she is sending him some text and asking if it's accurate. Because she's going to put this in the court filing, I presume. Upon information and belief, Willis and Wade met while both serving as magistrate judges and began a romantic relationship at that time. This is obviously legal legalese. You're going to put that in the ruling. And he says, no, municipal court. So he's not saying no to the entire statement. He's just saying no, making the distinction between magistrate judges and municipal court judges, okay? She says, thank you. And then he responds, but you can't put where they met. Not many people know that. I might be the, I might be one of only not even Chris Campbell. Okay. And then she responds, I'm almost done with my motion. I'm not filing you until Monday. Go home and sleep. Little smiley face using that feminine, hey, the, the feminine wiles never, never fail, does it? I could send you a draft. Can't wait to hear about your trip. He says, okay, happy hunting, LOL. Now we're getting friendly. Now, now we're getting friendly. <laughs> now we're getting friendly. Anyway. To your knowledge, has Nathan ever prosecuted a felony? I can't find a single one. And Terrence responds, never in his life has he ever prosecuted a felony. And this is the guy that the Fulton County District Attorney hires to be a special prosecutor in the President Donald Trump election interference case. Maybe you want, you want to get somebody a tad bit more experience for a case of this magnitude and importance. I, I'm just saying... Maybe it's just me being a little bit elitist, but that might make sense to me. Anyway, she responds, that's what I found too. 
it's bad. And he responds, send me a rough draft. And he continues, it's okay. Add me to footnote 15 and how much I made. That's Terrence Bradley speaking. She responds, I took you out. I can add that back. Good point. He says, yes, add it back. She, re- she replies, anything else? Anything that isn't accurate? He replies, looks good. She loved the comment that says looks good. And then she replies, how do you think they'll respond? I'm trying to anticipate. He says, did you look at campaign contributions, campaign contributions? I can't remember what we gave her, meaning Nate's law firm, that again was paid $650,000 U.S. dollars from January 22 up until now. He continues, when she was running, and she replies, how will they react to this? Attack me? Give this stupid, no fear, or favor speech? Terrence replies, that's another conversation. Sonia Allen, I don't know who that is. If you guys don't let me know in the comments. He says, no, they will deny it. She replies, no way, exclamation mark. He says, they won't attack you. She replies, OMG. They will say those trips and cruises were for work, even though he didn't submit them for reimbursement, LOL. She replies, Sonia, I keep trying to figure out where she fits into this puzzle. Terrence replies, yes, they're going to deny it. He also replies, do you know when she was elected, he was on her executive team and was a part of all interviews for people she hired and fired? They will still deny it. And I've heard that same line from someone with very close information. I won't say who or anything else. I'm not going to give up no information at all. And for all you know, I could be lying. But you can believe it or not believe it. I'll digress. She replies, I did hear that but didn't include it because I didn't have any proof. Was he just not paid for that? I am not sure if anyone from that office would verify. I am shocked she paid him so much. How did they think they wouldn't get caught? So careless. Why not just pay Nathan? Lord. Oh, she says, why not just not pay Nathan? Lord. He says, arrogance. Look, Terrence is snitching on his former friend, on his former law partner in the text. He's feeding her information that will be used in court. These are two lawyers. He knows who he's talking to. She's asking for specific information to to go and file things in court. And he's helping her. Okay. We continue. She asks or she texts him. The security accompanied them on their out-of-town personal trips. He says, not out of town, but would go to our office or dinner, the personal security. She says, ah, okay, thanks. I may subpoena the detail, but wasn't sure if it would help much. Those guys know it all. He says, yes, but they changed. You need to subpoena her original detail and current detail. The security detail. So he's saying subpoena the security, the security detail, the former and the current. He then says, you really want the guys when she was initially elected. He's giving her really key information. She continues, other than the security detail, can you think of anyone else who can confirm their romantic relationship? Obviously leaving you and Chris out of the mix. Maybe her kids, other co-workers. He says her kids, yes. Her command staff, Dexter, question mark, her administrative assistant, And she's liking all of his comments. And then she's sending him links. And um, she says, Dexter Bond, this guy would know if I subpoena him, more links. And then someone named Tia Green. And her, he says, yes, but may lie. She says, yeah, that's why I'm trying to get as many people as, as many people on the list of potential witnesses as possible. Hoping McAfee gives me a hearing. That's Judge Scott McAfee, the the judge that is presiding over the case. Okay. Let's see what they say under oath. She And then he asks her, who is her chief investigator? And then she sends a link. And he says, capers no. She says, I think Baez is the one for anti-corruption. And he says, and he is married to her executive assistant. She says, oh, dang. He says, yes, Baez would know. All might lie. Daisha knows that's one of her besties. She says, I don't know 
how she couldn't. I would be angry because Deja doesn't get paid as much as Nathan. Please tell me Lauren McCauley didn't know. I want her to not be involved. And Adam, I hope they don't know. He says, Adam, no, Lauren, no, they probably know, but not definitely. She says, like, Adam, no, Lauren, no, et cetera. She says, yeah, probably assume like everyone else does. She, he says, they're too hot not to know. But we'll say they don't know because never been in that setting. She says, yeah, they were scared around it. They haven't been inside the bedroom. <laughs> it would be comical to see them try to explain a Caribbean cruise away. Even if they are friends, he paid for her cruise. That's illegal. She says, that's the thing. Even without evidence of sex, he paid for her plane tickets and her travel. He says, subpoena them all. She says, I am nervous. This is huge. He says, you are huge. You will be fine. You're one of the best lawyers I know. Go be great. <laughs> encouraging her. Terrence Bradley encouraging the lawyer. Hey, you're, you're great. You're going to do fantastic. And then she responds. First, are you doing okay? I hope so, smiley face. Next, do you have an address for the East Point pad? Or maybe a name for the lady who owned it? He says, I do not. Let me see. She says, any leads would be helpful. Thank you. He says, do an open records request of all people hired when funding took office and who was fired around the June 2022. If you get that, I will be able to give you the name. And then she says, Thomas Ricks was a security. And then she liked the open records request. It was someone who worked for her. Damn. He says, she hired a girlfriend like a bestie. It was her place. Now, that is a person that she knew from D.C. I think it was when they went to Howard University. And she says, oh, well, I wasn't really around her. I didn't really know her. Yet, she moved into her house. If you don't really know somebody, but you move into their home, that seems like it kind of contradicts. If I don't know you, why are you at my house? Anyway, she replies, oh, so she hired the man and his girlfriend, owner, D it. He says green was her security as well. And then we continue. She says, does Fonnie know about the Sonia Allen affair? And he says, yes, that's her. That's the East point apartment person. He, and she says she is key. Thank you. She also knows about the media company payments. And he says, not sure if Fonnie knew about him and Sonia. Have you spoken to her? Robin? She says, no, but I found her name because I did open records for the media company. Fonnie hired to track her media. She was monitoring it and they yanked her privilege. So I figured it went bad. He says, yes, she was fired. And then she replies, my main question has always been, how did Sonia feel about Fonnie taking her man? <laughs> and then I guess Sonia Allen may have been with Nathan. All right. But anyway, we continue. Not sure how she felt or feels. Her and Nathan are extremely close now. It started romantic, but when I left, it was more brother sisterly. But occasionally, they would mess around. <laughs> he was still every now and again go over to, to the house. And these texts are from January 14th, 2024. So not very long ago between Terrence Bradley and uh, Ashley Merchant. Terrence Bradley, again, this is a former law partner of Nathan Wade. Ashley Merchant is the lawyer for Michael Roman, one of Donald Trump's co-defendants in the Fulton County, Georgia election interference case. OK, so Nathan's former friend is snitching on him, essentially to the opposition. He continues like she needs to fire Nathan, but she won't. And then she continues. Yep. No, she won't. But she doesn't dispute it. She will go down in the flames for Nathan. And then Terrence says, did you see this? And he's sending her pictures or an image. And the link says Fulton County DA Fonny Willis speaks for the first time after allegations. This might have been at the church. I can't really remember. And then she says, yep, she all but admitted to the relationship. She told her defense she isn't going to deny the affair, but now she is flawed and he is qualified. That was the original church speech that she gave. Lawyers are talking about this. Why would she do that? A moron. But anyway, she says today did not go well for her. Not sure who advises her to do that, but it backfired. He says, I hated her pandering to the black church. He was good enough for the white Republicans in good old Cobb County but not good enough for me. What's the difference that burned me up. And she says, do you think she's still going to deny? 
He says, no. Too many people saw their interactions. She says, me too. I think they admit it. And then he says, how much was cross pay and the other person prosecutor? Cross 250, Floyd 150, she says. They went to Australia in December. And that's 250 per hour. Not the total amount of money. I think both of them got paid 90000 and 75000 total, respectively. If I'm not mistaken, let's continue. And I think he knows that, which is what he's alluding to. They got paid ninety and seventy five thousand compared to Big Nate getting paid six hundred fifty thousand. All right, let's continue. They went to Australia in December. OMG, they went to Belize, Australia, Bahamas, Napa, Panama City Beach, Royal Caribbean, and Norwegian cruise. I guess that's the vacations and whatnot that Fani and Nate went on. And then she is saying, "Happy birthday." Love the pics. She says, thank you, T.Y. And then she says, just checking in on you. I'm going to be sending subpoena for the 12, for the 215 hearing, which was just the other day. And I hope it doesn't go that far, but I need to be prepared. She says, I'm subpoenaing Chris Campbell and Nathan Office stuff. I fear it would like suspicious or look suspicious, suspicious if I didn't also subpoena you. But I plan on putting Nathan and Fani on a stand and only have others under subpoena for backup. I will leave you out. But I think if I don't subpoena you, it would look fishy. What do you want me to do? I'm okay with it. So right here you're saying, yo, go ahead and subpoena me. It's no problem. It's all good. Bring me on the stand. But then when he got on the stand, I don't know. And I, I was speculating and I don't recall. Somebody, in my opinion, got to him before he got on the stage. In, in between these texts in late January to the time he went on the stand just in a few days, Compromise, in my opinion. She liked it. I'm okay with it. And then she says, it is my hope they do the right thing before then. And he says, you are my friend and I trust you. They will not. They're arrogant as F. And he, he literally wrote the letter F. She thinks she won the other day when she didn't have to be deposed. She says, "Um, that wasn't a win. Thompson set them up. Nathan can admit it all on the 31st. And if he doesn't, then Thompson will make Fanny sit. He basically gave Nathan a chance to protect her. But if he doesn't tell them all, then Fanny will have to sit. Nathan's fiancés make it look like he owed a lot of them money when he began this. He says, owed to who? Not true. Loans. And is she questioning the not true part? And it says, and she says, it may be coincidence he was highly leveraged. That's on paper. What do you mean? And that's all I got right there for the text. So you get that general idea of what's happening here. It's pretty clear that Terrence Bradley, Nathan Wade's former law partner, was snitching on him, feeding the lawyer for the opposition all the information that she wanted, saying, hey, you can subpoena me, it's all good, saying all these things. But then when he got to court, all of a sudden it was a 180. Now, as I close, I want to say this. I don't know how this is going to affect the case. I don't know if... The judge, Scott McAfee, is going to look at the text, then look at his testimony and be like, well, you're lying, sir. So I don't know how that's going to work. I'm not a legal legal. If you guys know how that whole thing would play out, you'll let me know in the comments. Do you think his, I don't know, and I can't recall, and I was speculating would be sufficient with the judge by that? I can't really call it, but I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? What's your opinion about all those texts? And if you made it to this particular part of the video, shout out to you. You made it. There was a whole lot there. I didn't know it was going to be that much, but I wanted to give you all the information that I had. And of course, I will link to everything that I showed you right now in the box so you're able to see it and read it for yourself. But I think he is a liar. I think he got compromised, got a bit bag of money and or threatened, and then he changed his tune. You went from providing all the info on Fonnie and Big Nate. And then you went to basically saying nothing. And it was weird because when he was in court testifying, Nathan Wade was sitting right in front of him. It was a whole big crazy mess. And I just hope at the end of it, as I close for real, that Nathan Wade, Fonnie Willis, and Terrence Bradley all get disbarred. Especially Fonnie Willis because she's a tip of the spear. You're the DA and you're doing all this stuff. You need to go. At least her and Nathan. Terrence Bradley would be a bonus. 
But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.